So in this video we're going to graph y equals 2x minus 3 and then we're going to name the slope and the y-intercept after we've got our graph going. So the trick is you actually just make up um, a bunch of x values to throw in here and then you calculate your y values and um, then you plot the points. So so that's the trick. So so all we do is we make up x values. They could be anything, right? But I'm just going to make up, you know, just for fun, 0, 1, and 2, right? And we're going to plug these x values one at a time into the formula to calculate the y values. So when x is 0, we're going to get 2 times 0 minus 3, right? So basically that's 2 times 0, which is 0, minus 3. And 0 minus 3 is... Is it ne negative 3? Yep. And so that's it. We got x is 0, y is negative 3. If you want to, you can write it like this. Okay, x comma y. Here's our points. x comma y. And our first point is 0, you know, negative 3. And we could even put that on the graph if we want to. 0, negative 3. So here's the x-axis. Here's the y-axis, right? So the x-axis is 0, you know, 1, 2... 3, 4, and so on, right? But it also goes negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, right? And y goes, y is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, and so on, right? So 0, negative 3 is x is 0, but y is negative 3. It's this point here. That's 0, negative 3, right? That point there. All right. And then we get another point. So x is 1. And again, I made these numbers up. 0, 1, 2. I just made them up, right? And we can make up some more if we like. But when x is 1, y is 2 times 1 minus 3, right? See that? And 2 times 1 is 2. 2 minus 3 is what? 2 minus 3. Two minus three, two dollars, take away three dollars, you're in debt by one dollar. It's negative one. And if you want to, you can write that as an ordered pair. X is one, Y is negative one. You don't have to. But just as long as you plot it on the, the graph, because X is one, Y is negative one. So X is one is here, Y is negative one, that's that point there, right? The point one, negative one, okay? Um, and so on. Um, and then x is 2, y is 2 times 2 minus 3, and that gives us 4 minus 3, which gives us 1, right? And so that point is 2, 1. So x is 2, y is 1, that's that point there, 2, 1, right, and so on, right? And we could plug in more points if we want. We only have already have three points. You can see these three points are in a straight line. Okay, if your line, look, if, you know, these are straight line graphs, so you say it, for these, these type of equations, your point should be in a straight line. And you can plug in more points if you want. Like, if you wanted to, you could plug in, say, you know, negative 3, just for fun. X is negative 3, what's Y? It's 2 times negative 3 minus 3. See that? 2 times negative 3 minus 3. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. What's negative 6 minus 3? Negative, negative 9, right, yep, cool, so that point would be the point, you know, negative 3, negative 9, and that would be negative 3, uh, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8, negative 9, that would be here. Negative 3, negative 9. Now, is this in line with the other points? Well, it better be. Um, and, yeah, it is, right? So, there's our points. And the line goes like this. Right? So, you can get as many points as you want. I mean, to draw a straight line, you only need two points. But it might be nice to get at least three just to be sure, right? Because just to kind of check your work. Or you could even get four points if you want. And again, you can plug in negative 10, you could plug in 4, you could plug in, you know, negative 2. It doesn't matter what you plug in for x. 
You plug something in for X, you calculate the value for Y, and then you get a point, you plot the point. And then you join the points up with a line, and it should be a straight line, and that's it, right? Does that make sense? But, I mean, this, this is the key. Like, students are always asking, like, where did you come up with these numbers for X? Well, we made them up. We made these up, and then we calculated the numbers for Y, and then we plotted the points. And this is the line Y equals 2X minus 3. So now we've got to identify the slope and the y-intercept, okay? So let's start with the slope. The slope is um, from the graph, right? So so all straight lines look like this. They look like this. y equals mx plus b, okay? Where m is the number in front of the x, and b is the y-intercept. So for, from our equation, what's m? That's the slope. Slope m equals what? You can see it off the equation. It's just the number what? It's 2, isn't it? Slope is just 2, right? You can see that from the equation. And from the graph, we can see that because it's rise over run. If you take two points on this line, like let's say this point and this point, to get from here to here, you go across one, that's run one, and you go up two, rise two. That's the run going across, this is the rise going up. So our run was one, our rise was two. The slope is rise over run equals two over one. What's two over one? Two over one is just two, right? So the slope is two. You can see it from the equation, you can see it from the graph, right? The y-intercept is what? What's b? So y-intercept, yeah, the b is negative 3. You can see that from the equation. b is negative 3. Negative 3. From the graph, where does the line hit the y-axis? That's the y-axis. This is the line. Where does the line hit the y-axis? At Right, at this point, yeah, at the point 0, negative 3, or when the y value was negative 3. Isn't that right? So we say the y-intercept is negative 3. See that? Because it hits the y-axis at negative 3. Okay with that? So the y-intercept b is negative 3, you can see it there. And the slope m is 2 over 1, rise over run, which is 2. You can see that from the equation and from the graph, right? Great question.